I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief of Business in Vancouver. On behalf of BIV, welcome to this special series of three podcasts on Indigenous business issues. The series is brought to you by Fortis BC, Energy at Work, and by TELUS, the first Canadian technology firm to launch an Indigenous reconciliation plan, available at telus.com slash reconciliation. The host of this series, I'm really pleased to see her again, is Chastity Davis Alphonse of the Shilkotan Nation. Enjoy the conversation. Good afternoon, Chief Joe Alphonse. Thank you so much for being here today um, to be a part of our podcast series for the week of the launch of the second issue of Makuk P. Silem. And we are so happy to have you uh, as a columnist, as part of the magazine, as well as joining us here today on our podcast to celebrate the launch of the second issue. Um, Chief Joe Alphonse is the tribal chair of the Chilcotin National Government, as well as chief of Klerinko, um, and has been serving his nation and his community for his entire career, close to three decades. And we're very honored to have you with us today, Chief Joe. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us a chance to speak and be a part of uh, a part of this uh, podcast and talk about our uh, our involvement with this uh, um, exciting new initiative uh, and stuff. So, so thank you for the intro and the invite to take this opportunity is to share a little bit and. Um, I think it's a really wonderful opportunity just to have a chance just to speak a little bit, shed light into our views into the world. And, uh, and you know, a uh, business magazine um, such as this is, uh, it's, you know, the business community as a whole has to learn and should learn more about our Indigenous struggles and stuff, uh, economic development and um, stuff has always been the root of our, our motivation to to um, to to win Aboriginal title, you know, um, logging in the Brittany Triangle, an area between the Seco and Chilco River, you know, um, without consent of First Nation and or revenue sharing was what led to to us wanting to. We said that's not acceptable. We stood up. We negotiated. We negotiated and we negotiated over and over again with companies and logging companies and with their legal representatives. But at the bottom, at the end of the day, they didn't want to share any of their revenue or opportunities and that was unacceptable. So that's why we fought, we fought, fought hard. We fought over 20 years to get to the Supreme Court of Canada to level out the playing field, to give us a chance to to enter into uh, business um, in our area and for all First Nations to, to, to have that opportunity. Canada wants to see its full, and British Columbia want to see their full potential. They have to include uh, Indigenous uh, um, people in, in, in any, any projects they do. And uh, so I think this is a, just a wonderful opportunity and uh, I thank you guys for um, Given us up. Well, thank you so much, Chief Joe. The pleasure is ours to have you with us today and as part of the magazine. Um, you talked about in your intro about the Supreme Court of Canada case uh, with the Chilcotin peoples. And um, I know that this was a landmark case that, uh, and the decision was made in 2014 um, to award the Chilcotin. Uh, the win of Aboriginal title over a portion of your traditional territory. Now, I know that I'm familiar with the case, but for our listeners, just uh, interested in hearing about um, the title case and uh, the journey that, that led you there and, um, and what it means to the Chilcotans. Yeah, I think we're... Um... We've uh, struggled. Uh, we've we've uh, wanted to, you know, move our issue forward. Uh, when you represent work for an indigenous nation, your job's to try to improve and the quality of life for for the people you represent. And uh, you know, for the Chilcotin and our history as Chilcotin people, uh, 
you know, there were there was opportunities to join, you know, the BC treaty process, but uh, that wasn't favorable for our nation for for a variety of reasons. So we we took the um, the slower route, uh, the route, uh, you know, to go to the Supreme Court of Canada and um, and fight to prove that you know we've always been here and. To be here before contact was to um, have access to all of our natural resources. You know, with Canada being established, uh, First Nation people were were situated on reserve, and you know, a lot of times in the early days, um, you couldn't even leave the reserve without permission. So, and you know, often we would be placed on within the most least desirable areas within our territory so there isn't a lot of opportunity there and you become dependent on on government uh, funding and stuff to, to for housing water and all of those things and we don't want that we we're proud people we want to be independent and uh you know we the, the road to independence is through economic development we want access to those trees we have Probably the largest copper and gold mine deposit in in Canada and within our territory. We want access to that, and we want a fair share of that. We, we're not saying no to everyone, but only only that we be recognized and we be consulted. We we have a say on how those natural resources are extracted, and uh, and and finally, once you know the revenues are spin out of that, you know we want those revenues to to filter through through our nations to support our government structures, our education structures, our social structures, and all of those things. So, so title case was um, it was huge. We without it, we we didn't have that opportunity. We were we were uh, in poverty, and often I would tell people, uh, you want to see a third world country, you don't have to travel to a third world country. You just drive down the road and identify where there are Indian reserves right here in Canada, and you, I guarantee you, you will see those conditions um, um, on Indian reserve land. So, so that's um, in a nutshell um, a lot and what the title meant to us. And you know, I spent my entire career fighting to prove that. I said, you know, as a as a young man. Uh, um, I wanna, I wanna win title, and I was told over and over again, there's, there's no way you guys will ever win title. But you know, there's many layers to winning title, and um, you know, you have first off, you have to have a good team all around you, lawyers, leadership. You have to have consistency. You have to have consistent leadership, consistent staff, and you because you have to continue to raise the issues in a consistent kind of way. And um, and mostly, you know, there there was an environment, I guess, uh, an environment for for change. Canadians across this country, in my opinion, um, wanted to see that change. They they were tired of the mistreatment that uh, and the lack of respect granted to First Nations and First Nation uh, disputes going on all across this country. They wanted a change and. Um, and we were just fortunate enough to 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 come, you know, to reach uh, the Supreme Court of Canada at, uh, at a perfect time. And you know, it's not only Canadians that wanted that because they could see both levels of business and government uh, um, share very negative views and and um, with uh, Indigenous peoples. So, so I think you know that that um, if that made any sense. Um, that's uh, that's us in a nutshell and what the Aboriginal title meant. And without it, a lot of First Nations wouldn't be here. So this is not just a benefit to the Chilcotin, the Tsleil-Kotin, but to all Indigenous people um, across this country, Canada, and, and Indigenous groups all around the world use that to inspire uh, to inspire them for for you know a, a better life, just a better life. That's it. Not to become billionaires or anything, but just to live comfortably and to, to have a better future for for our children.
Well, thank you for sharing that, Chief Joe. Um, and I also just for our listeners who may not know what Aboriginal title is, Aboriginal title means that uh, the Chilcotin have been awarded um, title slash ownership over a portion of their traditional territory. And when the colonial government uh, came into power in the 1800s, they took away um, any uh, opportunity for Indigenous communities to have title over their their lands and it and the Indian Act took over and made decisions on behalf of the First Nations people. So the Chilcotin case, the win is historic. It's the first time that it happened in our uh, judicial system and in our justice system. And so congratulations on the milestone win of title. Um, and also just want to ask you about um, having title over your lands, what opportunities has it brought to the nation in regards to economic development, or uh, you talk about also an increased quality of life. So just interested in um, what the path has been since 2014 for the Chilcotins. I think the, um, you know, fortunately, um, get the wheels of government off and turn very slow. And, uh, and I think those opportunities, the biggest thing it's given us is recognition. You know, um, Saitotin are recognized nationally and internationally. And, and as a result, I think it's, it's, it's provided opportunity for us. You know, we have a, a huge um, opportunity, uh, you know, um, with uh, Shell Canada, for example, a large uh, international company on carbon taxation. We've done that. We've uh, planted um, over a million trees this 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 past summer in our in our territory. Uh, our territories also face you know some of the largest wildfires in the history of Canada in 2017. So so industry has stepped up to to help us re replenish that and and in doing so created uh, stability and opportunities for for a lot of our members. A lot of our members are sensitive, you know, they they could work for larger companies and stuff like that, but they also want to know that they're given back to the environment. So so it's really stabilized um, 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 companies that we've had. We've it's allowed us to to grow um, and and it's also allowed us a chance opportunity to 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 look on the social front of things and and provide more housing and social related programs that are more reflective of our culture. If you want um, if you want healthy people, then you got to try to to make them proud of who they are, and, and the best way to do that is provide opportunities that are culturally appropriate for for them and stuff. So I think um, the case has has done a lot for us. There's still a lot of work that has has to happen, and and some of that work is um, is internal. It's um, you know we 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 have to look at um, ways to train and educate our members. Uh, um, you know, with the opportunity, you know, you have to you have to fill um, if there's opportunity, you have to find workers and stuff. So so I think there's some of the work is uh, internal, but it's a uh, it's a challenge our people are more than willing to 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 accept and are doing really well. Uh, and uh, you know, it's the only thing limiting limiting us, I think, is um, a lack of imagination. So, and belief because we've been suppressed for so long. You know, it's tough for 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 our people to believe they can they can run huge uh, business opportunities and stuff and. When it happens, and um, you know, we've opened a um, four point seven million dollar gas bar in our community, and um, you know, it brings pride to our members, and our our members are, you know, they come down and they they keep saying that they never imagined that we 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 ever established such a facility and stuff like that, and the workers that were once intimidated are now, you know, really thriving and rolling out the, the goods on the shelves and um, looking for creative ways to to, to keep uh, keep the place afloat and moving forward. 
Yeah, that's really inspiring to hear about uh, lifting up your community members and um, providing opportunities for the overall improved quality of life. Um, lots of hard work to get there. Um, I want to ask a question about um, you talk about the title case and the opportunity for the Chilcotins and your community members. Um, what has shifted uh, in your experience and in the nation's experience since the title case with working with government or and or working with industry? Have you noticed there be a shift in how they approach the Chilcotins um, in regards to working together? I think there's been a huge shift. I think it's not only for Chilcotins, but I think to incorporate Indigenous views all across this country, almost immediately we start seeing you know, policy changes being implemented within federal governments, provincial governments, and municipal governments a little bit slower, but, um, and business, um, I think, you know, take a different approach. Um, well, I think that shift started happening even before our case, but there's, there's definitely um, a good will on behalf of businesses to, to come forward and work with us in a, in, in a positive way. I, I, most businesses that we deal with, if we're, if we're, you know, if they know we're not going to favor something, they just won't go there. And uh, whereas in the past, uh, the approach has always been, it doesn't matter, the law's on our side and we're going to move forward. And, you know, we're, we're not interested in revenue sharing or, or, or anything like that. Whereas now I think we, you know, we have to be selective and, find out what's realistic and determine where we are as a, as a nation, as a people, and not get too far ahead of ourselves to allow us to fail. Uh, you know, you have to take little steps before, before you can run and, and, uh, and just focus on building up, um, you know, uh, our, as, as Indigenous peoples, we've, uh, we've had big struggles and we've had, you know, uh, Lots, lots of trauma in our lives, and um, you know, very recently we've had, um, you know, the 215 bodies that were identified at residential school and in, um, in Kamloops uh, and um, and stuff, and we've all been affected by those things. So, so a lot of the work that I talk about internally is uh, is really focus on 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 trying to heal ourselves. And um, as Chilcotin, one time we were, uh, I looked across the Chilcotin chief's table and I see only male finger figures, for example. And uh, at one time before contact, you know, all of our Chilcotin chiefs were, were women, you know, and, and so there's, um, there's a shift happening and I see more and more women coming up uh, um, and, taken on the leadership roles and and um, it's helped by the fact that we've also recognized that and we've established you know a Tehlkotin Women's Council and and uh, empowering them in ways and you know it's a, it's a, it's a neat to see the growth and the leadership forming and and all of that and uh, I get excited on on where where all that's going to lead because uh, even though we have economic opportunities, we still have to respect our our culture, our history, and our way of doing things. And um, and and I think that's one of the reasons why you know why I chose to 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 write and be a part of uh, this new magazine. I think that gives us as Indigenous people a chance to 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 shed some light into who we are, you know, right now in Canada, you know, it seemed like for, for, for decades and centuries, we've been, we've been living in shadows. And uh, even though we have neighbors living right adjacent, they, they don't really know who we are or what we represent. So this is opportunity to, to educate that larger population. And I think, we have that responsibility as well. And 
I'm happy to do that. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief Joe. So many inspiring things that, like that you're talking about the Women's Council and um, you know working towards rematriating your communities uh, with establishing um, the Women's Council and talking about traditional governance and weaving them back into your community. Um, as well as, you know, talking about um, the importance of educating uh, those that live near you. And I know that in the news recently, um, uh, there was a call for Mayor Walt Cobb uh, to step down due to um, some inappropriate remarks that he made uh, in regards to First Nations people. And, it, earlier in the conversation, you also talked that mu the municipal governments have been slower to acknowledge the title case and acknowledge what that means to the region um, and the area that you live in. And so I just am interested in, you know, what your vision would be for uh, that for the Chilcotin region and, and working in partnership for economic development there with municipal governments and industry and just Williams like businesses and in, in general. I think, um, you know, I, I you know, uh, <clears throat> you definitely want to have a, a good relationship with the municipality that that uh, that your your territory sits in. But at the same time, you know, there are some very strong views that are out there. Uh, um, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, Williams Lake is trapped in um, a time warp of uh, 1970, you know, and whether it's, you know, Major Walt Cobb making another uh, um, um, idiotic statement on Indigenous history and whatever else that won't be tolerated anywhere else. Uh, you know, I think every, there's a lot of regions like that. And um you can't really do anything about those individuals. They choose to be, you know, where they're at and they won't go grow from that, but you have to continue to try to reach out to that larger public. And um, because at the end of the day, you're not gonna change that, that face up there, but maybe you can change the opinions of the voters that are voting him in. And, uh, and when you do that, then they become irrelevant, you know, and that's part of uh, the growth there's been a strong push to to suppress our views as Saskatchewan in in our area. That's why we fought fought so hard. We don't we're not going to take that. We're we're proud people. We're you know we're proud of our position. We may not be rich, but man, we we love a good fight. And if we if we have to do that, we're going to fight. And as long as we're fighting, we're happy because we're fighting to create a better and and a more you know, a good quality of life for our people. And as long as we're doing that, our people will always continue to 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 vote us in and stuff. So so you know um that's that's the way it is. And for as far as I'm concerned, and you know, uh, I think um what I would like to see though is um I think um cities and population all over the world I think realize global warming is a very real thing. You know, you look at um, what's going on here in British Columbia, and all the flooding and, you know, followed um, prior to that, we had all the fires, you know, and it's just one disaster right after another. You can't deny global warming there. So I, I see a big um, um, people searching for, for a better way of doing things. And, you know, if a city were to, um, to, to embrace the Indigenous views. You know, as Indigenous people, there's nobody that can manage the Chilcotin, pe the Chilcotin lands and resources better than the Tlaxcotin people who've lived there for thousands and thousands of years. You know, we become part of that, that, that ecosystem there. And, you know, we know that. So we know how to, how to best manage that. I often tell people, you know, uh, before contact, we, we manage our resources so well that when the Europeans first showed up, they said it was untouched. No, we, we'd lived there for thousands of years. We just manage it in a better way. So, 
and I'll, I will tell that to my members as well, Leo, the, name me one thing the Canadian and provincial governments have done well, like have you guys intimidated of forestry management practice? Look where our state of our forest is at. You know, and look at DFO and where's the state of our salmon? Where's the moose population? I think if we were able to manage, we we do a better job. I almost 100% guarantee you that. So it's 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 opening your eyes. It's our, our members beginning to realize that their opinion matters, and they 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 have a duty to 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 do their part in protecting the environment, so that our grandchildren um, have that same opportunities that that we have here present today. That's what this is all about. Yes, very inspiring. Um... I agree that uh, Indigenous knowledge and worldviews and ways of being and knowing have been excluded from the climate change and global warning, warming discussion. Uh, and I agree that uh, Indigenous peoples need to have a meaningful seat at those tables to start looking about how we shift the future um, to be better for not only Indigenous peoples, but all peoples. So one last final question for you, Chief Joe here, before um, we let you go is, you've been a visionary and a leader on so many fronts um, for your entire career over three decades. And I just um, wanna ask you what your vision is for the future for indigenous peoples in business um, here in British Columbia or across Canada and, or what your vision for the Chilcotins are. Um, an Indigenous business? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we want to be on a level playing field with everybody else. You know, we, 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 we don't want special treatment. We want to, like I say, we're, we're proud people. We want to be able to stand our, on our own two feet, but, but all of the rules and regulations up until now have prevented us from from doing that. You know, we you know we could build the most luxurious home on Indian reserve land, but we can't use it as collateral because it's on Indian reserve land. You know, so there's a lot of disadvantages to being First Nation on the business front, um, um, and and that's why right now maybe we're going through a period of time where where there are uh, op better opportunities when you're Indigenous, but I'll make no apologies for that because we've been suppressed for so long. We need to right the ship. There, there, there has to be, we need a nudge, we need a head start, and, and we want opportunities just like everybody else. And, uh, and, and not only opportunity, but to succeed, then, you know, we will have our failures, but that's fine allow us to have our own failures. We 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 grow we'll grow we'll grow from our like I I I run a small um, cattle ranching business and um and when I make a mistake, you know <laughs> I got nobody to blame <laughs> but myself. And uh often uh, it hurts my 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 bank account and uh and when that happens I guarantee you I learn really fast and I don't ever forget them. And stuff. So you know, I I think uh, as Indigenous people, be proud of who you are. You know, find find something that you love uh, doing, being, and, uh, and proceed. Move forward with it. Look for opportunities. Don't be afraid to 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 ask questions. You know, I I I um I'm always amazed that that when you when you whether it's in the business community or or in politics or anything when you're struggling and you ask people for help that oh how willing they are to to come out and um, help and that that doesn't matter what color they are you know uh, there's humanity in all of us and and that's where and that's the place where we're trying to get to as uh, as one of my elders told me um when we uh when we won aboriginal title said finally finally they're starting to see us as a people, and uh, and and 
that's one thing. But now, you know, we want we want independence. We want uh, we want to run our own type of education programs and stuff. And it's through it's through business we're going to do this. So so I thank you guys for listening. Um, 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 continue, I'll continue to 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 support the magazine and all that it does. And um, um, if they choose to have me give input again, I'd be more than happy to do that. And and so 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 till then, um, be well. Take care. Thank you, Chief Joe, for spending time with us today. I know you're very busy, and uh, so I just want to thank you for your support of the movement that we're starting here with Makuk P. Salam, the Indigenous Business Magazine published by Business in Vancouver. And just also want to congratulate you for the Order of British Columbia that's been appointed on you this year as well. And wish you all the best on your journey as you continue to create a better quality of life for your people. So thank you everyone for listening in today to our special podcast series that we're doing this week as a part of the publication of our second uh, Indigenous business magazine titled Makuk P. Salem. Have a great day. <laughs>